Good afternoon, my name is Charles Scott from Civil Designer Software. Thank you very much for allowing the time to join us today. I trust everyone is well. Welcome to this month's Open Classroom webinar, our 68th in our Civil Designer Software Open Classroom webinar series. This series forms part of our greater suite of software support services created to assist our existing clients with the effective application of Civil Designer. Please visit our website's services section for our full list of services unique to Civil Designer. And in the webinar section, find our list of past Open Classroom webinars facilitated by Andrew Cole, Cameron Boyle and Christopher Smith since the beginning of April last year. Please also visit our FAQ page which now hosts 360 short searchable videos created from our past webinars. Videos covering topics such as Civil Designers, BIM data files, workflow interoperability, how we effectively deal with existing crossing services, and how best to utilize our help desk support service. Finally, please visit our client showcase section for more information on where your industry colleagues are taking Civil Designer to. Back to today's webinar where we welcome back Andrew Cole who many of you will know well from our support center and the many training courses he has facilitated. During Andrew's time today, please do not hesitate to send us any questions you may have using the text messenger service in the GoToWebinar app. Please remember that we will be posting a recording of today's meeting in the website's webinar section later this afternoon. So good afternoon again, Andrew, and please take it away. Hi there and welcome to this month's Survey and Terrain webinar. In today's webinar I'm going to be looking at the survey modules transformations functionality as well as some of the functions under the conversion pull down menu. So just starting off with the transformations these functions allow you to transform a set of coordinates from one plane system to another system by applying an optimum shift, swing and scale transformation to the coordinates. In South Africa these functions are used to convert points from the older modified Clark 1880 coordinate system to the newer more modern WGS84 coordinate system. Okay so I'm going to start off with the individual transformation so this basically allows you to convert points from one system to another one by one on an individual name basis. Okay, so essentially you would need three points, three coordinates in the old system and three coordinates in the new system or what those old coordinates are in the new system or you need um, previously calculated transformation parameters. So if you've done this calculation earlier and you still got that in the project record or you need some outside conversion or transformation parameters uh, which generally come in a can be file format which is available to be purchased from certain um, companies or I know there's a surveying company that supplies that. Okay so let's start off running the individual transformation. So if I select individual I'm just outputting the information to the screen. Okay, and if I had done this previously, I could use the previous transformation parameters, but in this case, I'm going to use brand new transformation parameters. So I'm going to calculate these or let the program calculate these for me. So essentially, I've got points P1, 2, and P3. So I can input both of those old and new coordinates and then we'll work out those transformation parameters. Okay, so I'm just going to type in those. So it's P1, I need to add that in. P1 underscore new. Okay, so I can add that in. And then just the P2 and P2 new. And then the P3 and P3 new as well. Okay, so you can see once we've got those three coordinates pairs, 
then the program does then calculate that swing and scale factor for the transformation. Okay, just brings up the scale and swing values so you can read that out. And then I'm going to save those transformation parameters. So now I'd be able to select some other points that I can then convert. So let's just do TR1. I'm just going to do a few. Just pressing enter, TR2, and let's do TR3 as well. Okay, then I'm just going to calculate those and save them to file. Let's call that transform. Okay, and that information has now been outputted to my output box. So you can see those are those initial um, points P1, 2, and 3. Those are the new coordinates or adjusted coordinates for the new system. And then TR1, 2, and 3, those would be the adjusted coordinates. So this process then basically allows you to export all those new points to an ASCII file that you can then import to a project. Okay, so that was the individual transformations. So let's have a look at the transformations in a group. So with a group, you can convert points from one system to another in a batch of points on a batch basis. The data entry is identical to the previous method, so the individual transformation. So once the transformation parameters have been established, a name must be provided for the ASCII file in which to store the converted coordinates. You can also make use of the name and surface filter to define which points you want to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to use the same project and I'll select the group transformation just to the screen. I'm using those previous transformation parameters that we just established with the individual method. Okay, so there they are. And now I can set a name filter. So let's go and do all the TR points. So I'm just going to use TR and then I'm using the asterisk, the star, as a wildcard character to define the single digits and double digits over here. Okay, so that's your wildcard character. Okay, so this is the ASCII file to store the, the points to. So I'm just going to call that my TR points. Save that. Just drag the output window. So you can see here yeah, the previous old modified clock coordinates and these are the new WGS84 coordinates with that group transformation. So that also gets written out to a, a text file which we can then import into a new project with the correct WGS84 system. Okay, I'm just going to close the output window for now. Okay, then looking at the the other options here on the transformations pull-down menu, you've got the Clark to WGS84 ESA only option for individual and group. So essentially the same functions that we just worked through, but with these two options you actually need a K and B file, the correct degree square file for the area that the coordinates fall into. And those can be files can be purchased um, from certain companies. So that would be something that you'd have to source. So I'm not going to cover that right now, but essentially it works exactly the same as the previous two examples we did. Uh, just instead of generating your own transformation parameters, you need the can be file that degree square file, which would then have the, the parameters built into that file, those transformation parameters. Okay, so I think just to illustrate how that transformation works, I'm going to show you this transformation over here. And the way I'm going to do this one, this is just a, 
client of ours drawing which was slightly out of position so I'm going to run the transformation from the CAD module so before I run that I'm just going to export this um, to Google Earth just to show you the old modified clock position okay so I'm going to go to file export to Google Earth and I'm just exporting the CAD okay I'm just going to call that clock 1880 save it just wait for Google Earth to launch okay so this is just a standard function in Cell Designer to write out your project or drawing data to a CAML file just waiting for it to refresh okay so this is in the the Richards Bay area and this drawing that they were using for the project was an older drawing that was based on the old modified clock system coordinate system so if you look at this road for example that should be positioned down over there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the transformation in Civil Designer and then export that transformed uh, drawing back to Google Earth okay I think I'm just going to close and then just discard that okay so now I'm going to run that transformation on the drawing and then we can look at it again in Google Earth to see the, the modified position so I'm going to run this function is available in our CAD module so I'm running it out of the CAD module and it's on the modify pull down menu so there's a helmet transform which is similar to the individual and group um, transformation that we looked at earlier where you need at least three common points um, in the old system and the new system to calculate the transformation parameters the bottom one is the one I'm going to use that can be clocked to WGS 84 and that um, in the description mentions that you actually need the can be file I'm just gonna have a quick look at where those can be files of mine are saved so basically these are some old can be files that I've had um, from work fortunately I have one of those for the, the area that um, the latitude and longitude that we're going to be needing it for this particular drawing okay before I run the transformation I'm just going to put in a geometry cross on this top left hand coordinate grid intersection point so just a zero jump so that we can see that movement what the transformation uh, shift would be okay so there we've got it over there and then I'm going to run that function the transformation under the modify menu the can be clock to WGS 84 transformation there are a couple of options here you can select uh, certain entities in your drawing so selected would be an option to only transform the selected or only visible in this case I'm going with all entities in the drawing I'll just have to accept again then it'll ask me for those can be files so I've already pathed it previously so it's that folder okay no DTM points so that's fine um, would you like to cancel a couple of entities that don't get transformed so I'm just going to say no I'd like to proceed and you can see that shift I zoom in so that was the old position that's moved down and across so it's not just a horizontal vertical there's some sort of rotation in there as well that always makes it a little bit trickier to to calculate okay 
So let's have a look at that now in Google Earth again. So I'm just going to go to File, Export to KML again. I'm just going to do the CAD. Okay, so this would be the WGS 84. Just wait for Google Earth to launch. Let's see how that transformation has adjusted that drawing to the new WGS84 position. So Google Earth would work on the new WGS84 coordinate system. So that looks a lot better. You can see that that road is positioned now in the correct location. So this old drawing was still based on the, the old modified clock. Um, 1880 ellipsoid. So those are the transformations. Next up I'm going to look at some of the conversions in that conversion menu. Before I start with the conversions, just to mention with the CAD modify transformation functions, we're just actually physically shifting the CAD entities in the drawing with the survey methods uh, we export or outputting an uh, ASCII file with the new coordinates. Okay, so moving back to my survey application. So we moving on to the conversions pull down menu and starting with that geotopo function. So that would allow you to convert geographical coordinates in latitude and longitude to topographical y and x coordinates. The geographical coordinates that need to be converted need to be in a particular format as would be generated by GPS processing software. I'm just going to give you a quick look at that format. Okay, so that's basically the GPS um, processing software that would put it into this format it would be the name, the latitude degrees, minutes and seconds, and then the longitude uh, degrees, minutes and seconds, and then the height or altitude. And the file format there is comma separated or comma delimited. Okay, so the topographical y and x coordinates are written out to an ASCII text file with the name yxz coordinates. To run this function, you need to add a terrain file to your project. So I'm just going to have a look at this particular project. I've already added a terrain file to this project. Okay. So let's have a look at it. So we're going to go to Conversions, Geotopo, the file that we're going to use. It's this data CSV file. I'm just going to open that in Notepad just to give you an idea of what they look like. So that's that um, particular format that we're looking at. So the name, the latitude, degrees, minutes, and seconds, and then the longitude, degrees, minutes, and seconds. And there's some additional GPS um, information with um, positioning corrections, etc. Okay. All right. So this is the file we're going to be using. I'm selecting that. So just to read the instruction, it's the ASCII file that we're converting. I'm opening that up, and then I'm saving this to. I'm going to overwrite that on converted coordinates. Okay. And just to a screen output for now. Okay, so those were the latitude and longitudes. And these are the new y and x coordinates based on those latitudes and longitudes that we used. And then just to mention, um, with the incoming data from the GPS software, the latitudes in the Southern Hemisphere and the longitudes in the Western Hemisphere must be entered as negative values. 
Okay, the next item on that conversions pull down menu is this gold fields function, which allows you to convert coordinates on the Witwatersrand Rand gold field systems to a Gauss conform map projection coordinate. This requires your incoming coordinates to be in cap feet in an ASCII file, but I don't really have a data set for that, so I won't be covering the gold fields in this particular webinar. So I'll be moving on to the next two items there, extracting your survey data from topographical drawings, firstly in a DXF format, and then extracting the survey points from the actual text items, elevation text, in a CAD topographical drawing. All right, so let's have a look at the extract DXF function. So I'm changing over to this drawing. Okay, so what we'd like to do here is we'd like to create DTM points from this DXF drawing. At the moment, if I zoom in, you can see I've got a hold of CAD lines, just individual lines that the surveyor has added to this topographical drawing. Okay, so it's these DTM triangles. So we're going to create DTM points out of that. Okay, so what we need is we need to set up a terrain file firstly. So I'm just going to go to my file project settings. I'm adding a terrain file. I'm just going to call that extract points from DXF. I'm opening up a new DTM file. It doesn't exist as yet, so do I want to create it? Yes, I do. Okay, and then just to set the the map projections. So in this case, I'm going to use one of the presets. So remember, you've got various uh, map projections that you can use: Translocator, UTM, or localized coordinate system, and then all the different datums that you can select from. And then we've got these presets. So in this case, this is a a project in the UK, so I'm just going to go and do a search. So, for example, if I wanted to go Great Britain, gives me the area, and then I can select that OSGB, the British National Grid. Okay, so that should default to Northern Hemisphere. If you need some more information on these settings, when setting up a project, you can have a look at Cameron's previous um, webinar on project settings. It'll be under the frequently asked questions, FAQs on the Sil Designer website. So let me just bring that across. You can see if I go to Sil Designer, the FAQ videos, if I just type in your project, We'll see this um, survey projection settings. There's a video with a lot of information on all the projection settings and the project settings that Cameron did previously. So that would be worthwhile having a look at. Okay, so in this case, I've set up the Northern Hemisphere OSGB. Okay, so back to extracting our DTM points from the DXF drawing. So it's conversions extract DXF. And then you are asked to select the DXF file. So you don't initially have to have that particular drawing open on your screen. You just need to have a project open with the terrain file and then set up for the correct map projection, etc., the correct other band. And then you select the DXF drawing. In this case, my Rev1 drawing, open that up, and then to save it, call it Extract Points from DXF, and this is outputting extracted data to a CSV file. You can also write out all the triangulation lines as feature lines or as break lines. Okay, 
just bear in mind if you have got a quite a big file that's going to extract a lot of data you might sit there for a while because it then would have to display all that information in the output window so sometimes a little bit wiser just to switch off the output windows remember you've got control of your output bar and the file output manager so in this case i've switched off the screen output so generally with the output manager you have the printer option and then straight to file but that's over and above which file we've already sent it to in this case and then you've got an option to not show this dialog on every function you are running okay so now that we've created the point data we can import that to the normal file import ascii file and it's that extract points from dxf Okay, just checking my coordinates, that's my X, my Y, and then my Z coordinate. Okay, I'm not going to bring in the bracket -like information in this case, just to get the point data in. Okay, and then if I go to my display settings, just to verify how many points we've brought in see the number of points that were added to the terrain file okay so that's extracting the dxf you can see if i zoom in switch on my point data or the heights at least you can see that at every intersection point there is a dtm point with the elevation that was added to the the database Going to toggle the heights off something that you would then run is remove duplicates um, so you just have to manage the the way you use that extract dxf but i would always recommend removing duplicate points so let me just run that quickly okay so it was best to run the remove duplicates and then in this case i didn't bring in the the break line data so I then also need to do my triangulation so just a normal model triangulate if i toggle off the cad dtm triangles cad layer if I switch the visibility off there you can see my triangulation okay so that's extracting the dxf that was the survey conversions extract dxf where we had a dxf drawing so it could be a dwg that you then just save as a dxf and then run the extract dxf okay so then moving on to the next function under the conversions is that extracting text from a typographical drawing so for this function i'm going to open up a separate drawing it's the combined topo okay when we're opening dwg or dxf drawings we look at the drawing file and we try and estimate what the setting should be but sometimes it'll be up to you to get the correct settings for the drawing so a0 drawing units would be meters in this case a survey drawing you can set initial scale just generally i make that one in a thousand and then mass surveyor coordinate system The northern hemisphere and then easting northern as the coordinate display you can set the number of decimals to your preferred number just the font mapping if there isn't a specific font available what should we use okay so you can see very similar the the drawing 
but in this particular drawing we've got um, initially there's a hatch so I'm just going to delete that for now quite a large hatch that I'm going to delete but just show you those are those DTM triangles we had earlier for the extract DXF we've also got contour lines but these are just individual lines so you wouldn't really be able to use the extract um, polyline to DTM function in this case unless you converted those to polyline and then we've also got the text so in this case I want to use the elevation text to create DTM points okay so what you'll notice is that there's a slight offset of the actual text and what we do is we insert the actual DTM point and locate it based on this insert position via of the actual text the alignment point which you can see down at the bottom left in this case the actual spot level position is down there with the that green cross is so that's the actual level the position that it should actually be so there's a slight offset which I have measured let me just show you so I'm just going to go to CAD and create a geometry cross quickly just going to pop one in over there and then if I measure with my geometry intersection you'll see it's half a meter so horizontally half a meter away and then vertically as well it's also half a meter okay so the way I'm going to reposition it let me just remove that geometry let me just close my output window I'm going to select all the text and I'm just going to move it half a meter, half a meter. So I'm going to go to select same type, all the text, and then I'm just going to move it half a meter and half a meter. So I'm just using my arrow keys to the left, half a meter, 0 0.5, enter. So you can always use the arrow keys, horizontal, vertical. Um, to move items and then down arrow key I'm going to move that half a meter as well 0 0.5 enter so now that alignment point is exactly on the spot level position scale to deselect but you can see if I select my text you can see the alignment point is exactly on the position of the cross Okay, and then one more thing I want to do in this case, I'm going to go select same type. So once again, just selecting all the text, and then I'm actually going to go file, save that as a separate drawing. So I'm going to go to save, file, save options, save selected. Elevations only. Okay, and then if I open that up, I'm going to open up that, it's a DR4 that I saved it as. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see just the elevation text that has come in. Okay, so to run the extract text, we need a DTM file, so I'm just going to add that in project settings. Just add a terrain file once again. Okay, and then I just have to use my presets again. Set up the correct file. In this case, once again, a UK project, but obviously if you're working in a different region, you'd have to set up that specific uh, region's projection settings. Okay, so we've got a terrain file and then I can run that conversions extract text. Maybe let's just check. Um, this is on a specific um, CAD layer, so I could select the, the layer as well. So it's conversions extract text. 
and we can say single layer that's CDS spot level extracting it to destination surface one Okay, so if I go to my terrain surfaces, you can see 45,000 points have been extracted. Okay, so those are the two. You've got to extract DXF. You've got the um, extract text method that I just used. So in this case, now I would still have to triangulate in the terrain module, model triangulate. I've noticed at the bottom here yeah, there are a few gaps. If you want to triangulate just in a specific area, then you can use model IntelliLines. I might just need to triangulate a little bit longer over there, let's say 50 meters. Keep existing. Okay, and then maybe just space bar to repeat it. I'm going to go at 100 meters. Okay. okay, so there's my triangulation done. I could switch off those elevations now. Alright, so that was the extract text option. We've had the extract DXF and then the extract text. There is one more conversion function that I just wanted to touch on which is that um, import convert drawing entities the polyfaces to DTM. So we've looked at previous in previous webinars we looked at the contour polylines where you can create DTM points all along your contour polylines and then we've looked at extract DXF and extract text today. And then the polyfaces to DTM works quite nicely to create points. Um, a terrain model from 3D polyfaces. So let's have a quick look at that. Gonna open a drawing. Okay, so I've already set up a terrain file. Let's just have a look at that. Project settings created a terrain file, and essentially it's these 3D faces, 3D faces that we want to convert. Um, sorry, it's three underscore. Okay, so I'm just going to go to that three underscore. Let's sort that. I'm going to make this my current layer. Current only. Okay, so I'm just making those 3D faces visible. And then the reason I'm using this function is because you could use the extract DXF um, method as well, so this drawing is a DXF, but there is some duplication, and the reason for that is you can see that. Um, each edge of the triangle, the 3D face, is duplicated. So the program then would duplicate points when it extracts the DXF. So I'm just going to go use the 3D faces method instead. So it was that file, import convert drawing entities, and polyfaces to DTM. And then I can just select that layer of mine, the 3D, drop it onto surface one. Okay. Okay, and then you can basically see that those points have been created. Switch on the elevations. Sorry, the elevations. And we can check out the triangulation. I'll make that my current layer. Switch off the visibility there. You can see it's triangulated already. So that probably would be a slightly more efficient way of doing it with the 3D faces. It works pretty well. Okay, so that's 
all we have time for today. Hope that was helpful. Have a good day further. Until next time, cheers. Thank you, Andrew. That was great. And thank you very much to all of you who attended today's webinar. Please remember, if you would like any further information or assistance with regards to the contents of Andrew's presentation today, or if you would like to request future webinar topics, please use the email address listed on your screens right now. Finally, please follow us on LinkedIn for our weekly updates covering new client showcases, civil engineering related industry news, and new civil designer software tech tip videos. Once again, thank you very much for your time today. Have a great afternoon, weekend, and goodbye for now.